about 1.30 p.m. Nigerian time today. We're live to you for our full coverage of the second monetary policy committee of this meeting of the central bank concluding today. The uh, briefing by the central bank governor will be at about 2 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. So all of that will be part of the package because uh, a number of analysts are looking at what the body language of the MPC would be. The central bank chief says last week, Thursday, that there will be no easing yet on tight monetary policy. He says that window remains uh, tightly shut until conditions and the environment suggest otherwise. That's part of the uh, our commodities market. And what's in all of this for consumers market? We'll talk about Brexit. And again, there's a looming global economic recession. Uh, in case you're busy with other things, you need to open your window and see what is coming in from the outside. No. What's happening outside? Really? Adimo Kwesa is here from Financial Derivatives Company. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's start with the MPC, which is our home <laughs> domestic issue. Yeah. Let's deal with that. What's the thinking uh, from your team at FDC as far as the uh, policy parameters or, or indicators are concerned? Yes, like you said earlier, I think this meeting is likely that they're going to hold status quo normal and cheaper parameters. But I think mm. what is highly symbolic about this meeting is that it's the first policy meeting since the elections. So what markets will be looking for is a sense of direction and of what the of what economic and of what monetary and exchange rate policy will be. And it's also a measure of the economic ideology of the of this new Buhari administration. So I think that is what, why markets will be anticipating this meeting very keenly. Some folks are, believe that, yes, the elections are over, but politics is not over yet. Yes. Well, they're, they're a bit of like Samish twins. Uh, elections, yes, that's an event. Politics is ongoing. Yes. So you need to fix cabinet. You need to give us an idea what your policies are. So uh, there will still be a lot of politics in here. I believe so. And, and unfortunately, I think believe that is what would sort of be cloud economic consideration we're still this politics hangover we're still dealing with this hangover from the, from the election mm. so for uh, for the next couple of months which that should still be at the fore but hopefully by the tail end of q2 economic considerations will begin to take priority mm. so so most likely you fix you, you folks believe that the mpc would say look we'll have majority of decisions to say let's hold rates until perhaps uh, the swearing in yes and, and, and a new cabinet that is like. the most likely option we believe yes mm. Okay, uh, there are quite a lot of burning economic issues. I'm sure the MPC is one of them, but again, we'll wait till later this afternoon for clarity on that. Uh, but there's still no clarity about Brexit. Yes, there's so much uncertainty. Is that a fever, fever pitch right now? I think yesterday, Parliament took control from the Prime, Prime Minister's hands, which is a major development. But I think Brexit, it is almost without question that Brexit would affect whichever form it takes would affect the global economy and by extension the Nigerian economy. And I think the most severe impact would be if it is a no-deal Brexit. I posit that Brexit would have an, if, have an effect on, on the Nigerian economy in three major categories. Number one, investment flows. Number two, trade. And number three, aid. Investment flows, I believe that if a no-deal Brexit take place, takes place, it's almost without question that the British economy will be, will be impacted severely. It will, the British economy is likely to contract. And if that happens, will the British economy be looking for investment deals abroad? I believe it's more equitable to look inwards and try and show up your own economy, try and stimulate your economy. It will make, definitely make more sense. So in terms of investing in other economies, I believe that would decline investment flows in countries like Nigeria. So, so when we look at some of the investment vehicles of, of the UK, like the CDC group and the rest of them, uh, all, all their plans for, for, for sub-Saharan Africa might be impacted somewhat. Most definitely. Moving I, forward. Most definitely. If this yeah. ends up on a very nasty note, the way it's beginning to look, with five million signatures calling for another referendum. Yes, most definitely. So most, I think this uncertainty is likely to going to last a little bit much longer, which mm -hmm. is not a nice thing. So. Number two, in terms of trade, yes, there is a maybe said uh, Commonwealth countries, Nigeria, mm -hmm. Kenya, South mm -hmm. Africa, to mm -hmm. try and prove that we're still a major priority. Mm -hmm. Yes, being a Commonwealth country, we should have a degree of priority over other nations. But if we're being logical, I believe there are more lucrative deals in Japan, China, US. So I believe Nigeria will be very low on that priority list in terms of trying to sign trade but, deals. But, but, but likely that Nigeria will abandon Britain. 
No, most definitely. We're a common for world country. We have deep historic ties with, yeah. with the UK. So we'll when, do, when you talk about historic, educational, exactly. Uh, cultural, so we're still going to be social economic. Yes, yeah, so we're still going to diaspora. Be, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're still going to be very close. But I think with every change or crisis comes an opportunity. Mm -hmm. With this Africa free trade agreement that that we spoke that we spoke about in the previous segment, mm -hmm. I believe this is the time for Nigeria to improve and establish other alliances with our neighbours. This Brexit would only strengthen the importance of this Africa free, free trade trade agreement. We can boost inter Africa trade and we can also fast track growth on the continent. I think the third category, which is aid, I think this would not let, not impact Nigeria as much because I don't think we qualify for aid because we're not a low income. But in terms of our other African countries, I think this will have a, the least severe impact because African governments are learning to stand on their own. They are learning to rely less on aid. We're seeing internal revenue, internal revenue strengthening, tax collection rates strengthening. So, and in terms of access to the sovereign markets, that has also improved. So I believe African governments would rely less on aid. So I think that would have the least impact on Nigeria and the whole African continent. Okay. Before we go to uh, the looming global economic yeah. recession and, and what have you, look at the power sector. We're still not up to speed. Then this morning, the news all around, all the, the media, that the NERC and the discos are in war of words, who should supply meters. Mm. Uh, and it looks like we're not getting the end of this year, to the end of this year. Oh. While the Minister for Power, Works and Houses says there should be more discos, there should be more gencos uh, uh, in the mix so that they can give the existing providers some, some run for their money. This quagmire in the, in the power sector, I think it would, it would continue <laughs> for... It's a quagmire. Uh, <laughs> the quagmire, it would continue. But I think what, what needs to happen is we need to create an environment whereby investment, where investment can come into the it's sector. It's a serious mess out there. It is. Look at what's happening in South Africa. South Africa, the increased tariff, the increased high, um, uh, rates on tariffs. Mm. The South African government wants to, I think they want to inject about $5 billion in ESCOM in a period of five years. But... Power, the state power state is still struggling. I think a similar thing has to happen in Nigeria. We need to, this is a, a very touchy subject, but we need to increase electricity tariffs so that we can provide a conducive environment for yeah, investment. You're touching a live wire there, I It is, but... I am just going to warn you. Short, that's a very live but wire. But short-term pain equals to long-term... No, no, you, long -term that's a very live wire when you talk to 180 million Nigerians. It does, it is. Uh, whatever that is. <laughs> but but let, let's is. move on quickly because of time to, to the oil sector. Mm. Uh, then with the whole conversation around the likely U.S. Uh, uh, economic uh, recession this year into 2020, uh, if you look at the Eurozone PMI for the month of March, including the U.S., they were really, really negative, nothing good to, not, not, not something to, to be cheerful about. Yes, I think last week too, we saw an <coughs> inverted yield curve, which is seen as a, an yes, omen. In the, in the U.S. It's seen as an omen or a precursor to a global recession. Mm -hmm. So that is what has really affected oil. Oil is up today, but... It's still way down by that concern of a imminent global recession, which, and also, like you said, Germany, the largest, economic, largest economy in Europe, reported a third consecutive decline in, in, its, in its PMI. PMI. So that is very, that's, very... That's significant. Exactly. That is very concerning. So it means that a recession is imminent. 2020, 2021, we should... We're going to fasten our seatbelt. We must be uh, prepared for that. Yeah, and, and clear off whatever we're doing back at home to be prepared for the wind yes. from outside. We, we can see all, all is struggling to cross that $70 mark. It's going to be difficult. Because of that weight, that ceiling of, of, of that fear of a global economic slowdown. So, and China is not looking very fantastic, at least at the moment. Yes, China is also reporting weaknesses. They reported also a decline in their PMI too, so mm. a decline in consumer spending. So yes, so every major economic, every major economy is feeling the weight of, a, of, a, of an imminent global recession. Mm. Okay. Uh, you folks have been warned. That's what is coming in from the outside. Headwinds from outside and from inside. We're looking for tailwinds to move Nigeria's economy forward. Thank you very much, Adimo Kwesa. Thank you very much. Uh, a member of the economic think tank at Financial Derivatives Company.